We've come up to Tool Fair, so I've got another day off the tools, and we're gonna have a good look round, Roger and I, Roger's doing the filming, I'm gonna do the talking, and we're gonna have a look round at the products, the tools, talk to the people, and hopefully find out a few things that we haven't seen before, and bring them to you, obviously. And you see in the background, you've got all the big names here, well worth a visit. This one's at Sandown Park in Surrey, but there's five of these shows across. There's some Skill Builder fans there. So you, you recognize Roger from Skill Builder. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your trade? I'm a plumber. A plumber, another one. What you bought? SDS drill, rigid pot cutters. That's yeah, a pair of them. They look pretty good, these. Ratchet. Is that a new thing? Yeah, yeah. well they do like universal things, 28 to 15 and they yeah. do ratchet as well. Oh, Quite nice. cool. And do you know what a ratchet is? Yeah. A little know, bit bigger than a mouse shit. <laughs> <laughs> This synchronometer is not dissimilar to what I use one. This is for the roofing guys out there. People ask me, how do you know what a pitch of a roof is? Okay, so this is an inclinometer. Okay, and once it's set up, it'll tell you the pitch. It also works that way as well. So you can keep that level and offer that up and down the slope. However, they're not foolproof because these are incredibly accurate. But if you put this on an existing rafter, You've got the ridge, you've got a purlin, you've got the plate, and in between everything does that. So if you put it on the wrong spot, it will say 33 degrees. If you go up the rafter to the purlin, it will say 37 degrees. So what you need to do is a straight edge from purlin to plate over the top of the rafter, taking out that undulation, if possible, from the ridge to the plate, then use your inclinometer and you're going to get exactly the right pitch. And sometimes it can vary from three or four degrees in one rafter based on that deflection so that's a good little tip if I'm cutting a roof and I'm using the small wood roofing square so I'm, I'm measuring my half span and I'm multiplying it by a measurement now the measurement is in relation to the degrees of pitch I'll give you an example for 45 degrees for every meter that you travel level you travel 1.4156 millimeters at 45 degrees and for every degree of pitch whether you're 35 36 37 38 there's a dimension for that so I measure my span it's two meters I times that by 1.4142 and I get to my rafter length so if I'm minus half the ridge plate. yeah minus half the fitness of the ridge as Roger's saying so yeah he's done well there so yeah, that's why it's important, but quite often, if I'm pitching against an existing roof, I'll do it all on the measure, purely because it might be 44 degrees, and if I'm 45 degrees, my rafter could be 35, 40 mil long, and I'll be fiddling for ages. So it's much better off to do it off the measure in that instance. But useful bit of kit, just to know roughly where you are with it. You must know that the Stabila is the Bricky's favorite. Absolutely. Yeah, I only use a Stabila level. Um, purely because it's really robust and it works and, the, and you know it's just something you get used to and most tradesmen I know <laughs> have Stabila levels so it, we're going to be told now why Stabila are so good at what they do tell me tell me about it how you make it why is it strong what you'll see is this we know that any level basically yeah. the oil they may be the same color there may be a number of things this is a cutaway of a 70 series level if you imagine we're looking this way the light colour is epoxy resin. So this is injected, which creates a seat top and bottom, and then at the side. So effectively, this box section, it can then not move. Yeah. And this is the key. You can drop them, you can do what you like with them. Because that is specifically injected. Now, with this section here, the 70, you see many levels look like that. You won't see any that look like that. The ones that you see that look like this, what's happening inside of them? Oh, I'm not going to say anything because right. I'll just talk about our product. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so, I mean, could say, but, that's, but they're yeah. just not as good as what you're doing. That's what you're saying. They so use obviously. a very different process. Process, fine, yeah. Okay. And so the 70 series here, these will be leveled uh, on a automated system. Right. When you go into the 96s and above, they're actually labelled by human. Are they? So because that Each individual resin, one? Because that epoxy resin is pliable till it sets, so they're magnified and the bubble is level. So then when it sets, it sets precisely. I'll tell you what's really funny, no matter how many of these Stabila levels I've used over the years, I still, I don't know if anyone else is doing this, I still got my laser level out and I'm using my laser level and I'm still getting my 8 foot or 2.440 
level and I'm still and I don't know why I don't just trust it you know it's mm. kind of like it's partly because my eyesight's going now um, but equally but they're never wrong and I've dropped mine right off the top of the scaffold as well yeah. you know really and truly it's, it's like what you wouldn't want to hear on a date it's what it's inside that counts <laughs> and it is with a stabilo it's what's inside yeah you know the profile there's three the three processes it's profile file and assembly right. so that section inside you wouldn't know that that whole system is there right. you wouldn't know no but this is what Stabila strive to make the absolute best they can. What Stabila say they are, they're a measurement company. That's it. They don't make power tools or other tools, they make measuring tools. Yeah. And that's all they make. Yeah. And that's all they strive to make. And that method's used in every single level, is it? Yeah. From the it's even to the vial here. Yeah. If you look closely, they're actually metal rings and they're inserted by hand. They're recessed on in a CNC. Really? They're inserted by hand, because we have a go at this when we go over to yeah. the That's because so it doesn't create any friction on the book. That's incredible. It's the length that they go to yeah. to make, you know, it's even the shape of the bubble. You'll see with other level you can get a, 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 quite concave, but if you imagine that bubble is pushing, if you've got a, a very rounded vial, that bubble is, is pushing against that. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it's creating a break. Yeah, yeah. So everything has been designed to be the best it can possibly be. But when you talk about the price, yeah, do, yeah. it's the accuracy. Mm. Yeah. And it depends on if you start a job with a precise measurement. Yeah, yeah. Or if you start the job with a bad measurement that you have to knock down again, what's more expensive? Yeah, yeah. But the, what I try and do, I try and work with colleges as well. Yeah, good. Because a generation, say 30 and below. Yeah, yeah. I, I worked on site when I was younger. You strive towards what your senior tradesmen use. Yeah. It'll be a stability. Why? Yeah. Because they know. Yeah. Now it's enough. what looks good, what's cheaper. Mm. But if you want an accurate measurement, mm. that's what they strive for. Well, thanks for your time. It was interesting, and I think this is going to be one of my next purchases purely because it's got the measuring device on it. It's telescopic. I like yep. this, these things for the braces. I think that's a really good idea. And we do do a lot of timber framing. If you've seen our channel on YouTube, Skill Builder, yep. you'll have seen that we've done um, a series on timber framing recently. So um, if, um, maybe we'll check that out on the next one we do on timber framing. We'll use this, and we'll use it, you know, for that purpose. <laughs>